Hi there, everybody. As we are living more and more in a digital education world these days, it seems like a good idea to talk a little bit about email etiquette. Everything I'm going to talk about in this slideshow is based on guidelines written by the Online Writing Lab at Purdue University. They are a fantastic resource that I cannot recommend enough. They have guidance on every sort of writing you could be doing, but especially academic, professional writing, these sorts of things that we're all kind of living with in an online world. So if you plug their name into a search engine, they will pop up and should be able to help you and give you lots of examples. So let's get started. Some of the basics. The first thing that you want to make sure you're doing in an email is using a meaningful subject line. The subject line for an email should be used to sum up the topic. Most of the time, it's not going to be a complete sentence. You want to give your recipient an idea of what they can expect in the email without laying questions or comments on them right from the jump. Please don't use the subject line as a part of the body of the email and definitely don't use it as the only thing you send them. You shouldn't just write what you want in the subject line and then leave the rest of the email blank. Um, it just, it's not a good look. So in the subject line, you can sometimes ask a question, but generally not, and generally not a complete sentence, but just give them an idea of what they're going to read about or what you're emailing about them for. Okay, what's your purpose in emailing them? That's what the subject line is for. You always want to start with a greeting. Mr. Miss, Mrs. Doctor, Professor, whatever the case might be. Those are going to be more formal introductions. So that's when a student's emailing a teacher uh, or somebody's emailing a supervisor or you're emailing somebody that you haven't met before. So greetings that are like hi or just using the person's name, those are going to be a little bit less formal. I think a good rule here is to think and ask yourself, okay, how would I address this person in the hallway at school? Would I call them, hey, little, or would I say, Dr. Little? You know, what's the, how would you approach them in, in person? That's the same way you want to really approach them in the email. You want to always be using standard punctuation, spelling, capitalization, all of those sorts of things. Email is really most of the time a very kind of formal writing. It's like writing a letter, uh, especially when it's to somebody like a teacher or maybe somebody you haven't met before. So you want to make sure you're attending to those sorts of conventions. Please don't use all caps, okay? You don't want to be screaming in your email. Again, you probably wouldn't scream at them in the hallway. Uh, so don't use all caps. And don't use texting style abbreviations. The letter U for the word U, the number two for the word two. Standard punctuation, spelling, and capitalization. Let's keep it classy here, folks. Let's keep it formal. You want to also close with a salutation. Yours, sincerely, thank you, all the best. Stay safe you know, in our current situation would be okay as well. Something like that, something polite um, to let them know that you're wrapping up what you have to say in your email. What to include and what to leave out. With your paragraphs, keep them pretty brief and direct. All of us are getting a lot of email right now. And so we want to make the best use of our time. Um, I know Personally, some mornings I have to spend 45 minutes or half an hour going through emails and responding to emails because so many requests are coming in digitally. You know, instead of somebody walking into the room and asking the question, now everything comes through email. So keep your requests, keep your comments brief and direct. Okay, you wanna be polite, but you wanna to get to the point quickly so that they can give you a good response and then go on with what they, they have to do for the rest of the day. In general, you wanna avoid telling jokes in emails, it's just way too easy for them to be misunderstood. Uh, and never, ever, ever send a username, password, or other personal information in the body of an email. This has more to do with, you know, spam emails than necessarily communication between a teacher and a student, say. Uh, but it's just a good caution to get in the habit of. You know, we here at, at CCPS, we're never going to ask a student or a parent for their username or password uh, or other personal information, address, telephone number, that sort of thing, unless there's some sort of issue. Most of that information we have access to through our different systems. Uh, so there, if you get a request like that, whether it's from something that looks like it's coming from a teacher or a company, say, um, if they're asking you, hey, we're trying to unlock your account, email us your username and password and we'll get it sorted out. That's probably spam, stay away from it. Okay, and if you're always, if you're curious why that, questions coming in, if it looks like it's coming from a teacher, um, it's okay to ask the question, hey, I just wanted to make sure that this request wasn't spam before I send you my, my information. Okay, can you please verify? Thank you. 
that's okay. Better safe than sorry. Uh, and don't, in general, send attachments to people you don't know without asking them first. This is not for, you know, your homework. If you know the email is from your teacher and they want you to take a picture of the work that you've done this week and send it in, you know that email, you know that person, that's totally fine. But if you're going to submit something to somebody that you haven't ever emailed before, it's always polite to ask their permission because you don't want them to get a little spooked and think that it is a virus or, you know, because they don't know you, they may not know your email. So it's okay to ask, it's polite. And on the flip side, if you're not sure about an attachment, you don't know what it is, don't open it. Even if it looks like it's coming from somebody that you recognize, if you didn't ask for it or you're not sure what it is, leave it alone. Again, reply to the person, hey, did you mean to send me this attachment? I just wanted to make sure before I opened it. That's okay. Uh, again, better safe than sorry. I know I've gotten spam emails that have looked like they've come from a colleague with an attachment and it says something like, something generic, like, hey, here's that file you asked for. Go ahead and open it and have a look. It wasn't real. It was them trying to put a virus on my computer. I mean, not the person I knew. It was some bot or somebody out on the internet. So again, it's always better safe than sorry. If you're not sure, just ask the question in a polite way. That's an okay thing to do. So here's a sample email that I was writing to my supervisor, Mr. Rickinger. You can see in the subject line that it's not a complete sentence, but it's clear in letting him know what I'm writing about. I'm asking about the new computer science lesson. The first thing in the email is going to be the greeting, dear Mr. Rickensrud, with a comma, and then I leave some empty space, one empty line, before I start the body of my email. It's two sentences. It's very brief, it's straightforward. Can you please forward me the link to the new computer science lesson plan? I would like to give it to a student teacher. So I'm asking a direct question in a polite way, and I'm telling him why I'm asking the question. Then I leave another blank line. Here's my salutation. I just say thanks with an exclamation mark, keeping it loose, keeping it friendly. We're on good terms. And then I leave another blank space, blank line, and have my signature. For most students, that's just gonna be their name. You're not gonna have all of the extra stuff like teachers tend to have it in their emails, but that's okay. So uh, it looks good, it's pretty concise, it gets to the point, so I can feel comfortable that I can go ahead and hit send with that. A few parting thoughts. If you are on a group email, so an email going to a lot of people, maybe your whole class, maybe your whole staff, please don't use reply all unless your reply is relevant to everybody in the email. If you wanna ask a question that's specific to just you, or you wanna make a comment about something in the first email, just use reply, do not use reply all. Once you've exchanged emails with the same person about the same subject, it's probably okay to leave the greeting off. Because at that point, you're almost having a conversation more like texting than a, a formal letter or a formal email. So you can probably leave that greeting off. Uh, they know who it is, they know what it's about. Um, that said, you still wanna keep your spelling and grammar, especially when you're writing to a teacher, you still wanna keep that proper and standard. Always read over your email before you click send. I really like to read it out loud because sometimes I, I hear things, I hear a mistake that my eyes don't necessarily pick up. You wanna run a spell check or grammar check, probably both. Our Google email has them built in. Uh, so if you don't have those turned on, feel free to turn those on and use those. Grammarly is a, also another great program that's out there, will help you improve your writing, uh, help improve your spelling and your grammar. And just remember, once it's gone, once you send it, you can't get it back. Always be sure that you, your spelling and punctuation is proper and that you are saying what you mean to say before you click that send button. Because once it's off and on its way to their inbox, there's no way to take it back. And so you always wanna take just a minute or two, make sure it's saying what you mean it to say, make sure it's being polite, and then hit send. Okay, I, I find that caution. Uh, never hurts anybody when they're dealing with email. So I hope that has helped. Um, and I hope everybody out there can use these tips to have some good interactions, some good communications. And I hope that you guys are staying safe and definitely staying classy, especially in your email.